what was the conversation with your daughter like? Because Minnie Maven is not many no, she's anymore. Now. Jesus. Yes, yeah. she is a whole little grown, wo- mm-hmm. becoming a little grown woman. Mm-hmm. And I, you can't just make a decision like that, make a life change like that the same way you could if she was five. Correct. You know, so what were the conversations like? Because I think that's so important. Again, mm-hmm. allowing her to learn through your lessons, but then also letting her keep that safe space with her yeah, daddy. So what were those conversations like? It's so funny because he and I just talked about this on this past Sunday. We we were talking about how blessed we are to have a daughter that can hold space for both of us. No matter what, she can love her mom and she can love her dad and respect us both. We don't talk ill of each other. Mm-hmm. Definitely not around her, but we're honest. Definitely not around her. Definitely not around her, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we're honest about what we each need Mm -hmm. and she gets to respect that it's okay like it's okay for people to know what they need and accept that they're not getting it from their partner like has nothing to do with her and our love for her but I remember her telling me early on when we first separated um she's like I think you and dad are gonna be great co-parents and I was like you think so and she was like yeah like you guys are gonna be great co-parents like she like the whole time I think because we approached it from we're going to do this with dignity she's just seen it as a process and Mm -hmm. not a problem Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like okay this is what's happening it's not to say she hasn't had her moments right and she has a small group at church that has supported her a lot and all those things but she's been very accepting and very like she told me one day mom like I love seeing you so happy she and can like see so it. in love. And I did not think I was unhappy. Mm-hmm. If you would have asked me a few years ago, I would have never said, oh, I'm unhappy in my marriage. That wasn't it. But when I started to think about what, where my life could go and what it could be if I was loved the way I wanted to be loved, I had to be honest. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't that it was terrible. He was an awful guy and we were just fighting it. We weren't doing any of those things. It was, but there was an awakening for me and I had to be honest about it. Was he shocked since it wasn't, you know, like y'all were always, it was always a problem? Or did he He kind of see it coming? He would say that he was shocked, but I don't think he really was. I don't think anyone wants to say I knew it was coming. Um, We had had conversations and I'm very open, you know, and I'm very clear. I'm a clear communicator, right? So it's not that I hadn't voiced certain things. I literally just don't believe he had the capacity. It, that's different than desire. Mm-hmm. I believe that he had the desire and not necessarily the capacity in in, in the time frame that I was working with. Mm-hmm. And I had to just say, I, I, there's no prize in saying, oh, I was married for 40 years, but 25 of them I was unhappy. For Facts. what? Facts. And that's what many of our mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers did. We don't live in that time anymore, mm-hmm. right? So I have a right to be happy, and I want to be happy and like fully express all of who I am all of the time. And so we had conversations. He still has said, that he felt blindsided. Um, And of course that's to be expected, right? And a part of like a big lesson that I've learned is I owe him the dignity of his own process. When we first separated, because I wanted it to be so, you know, amicable, I was like, we're gonna talk every week and we're gonna flush out everything. We're not gonna waste all our money on all these attorneys. People were like, it's gonna take you three years with all the stuff you got. I was like, I do not receive that. (laughs) We're gonna do this with grace. We're gonna do this amicably. And he went along with it, but I realized after several months that in his mind, he still thought there was a chance he was being nice because he's like, oh, if I do what she says, we're gonna get back together. And in my head, I was like really clear that that was not an option. And um, you know, we had some some difficult conversations and I had to just apologize just recently. I'm like, I was not trying to intentionally control anything, but I realized by by, you know, carrying on that way and just like, hey, we're gonna talk every week and we're gonna do this and it's gonna look like that that I was being controlling. Not from a like fear based place, but it was it was controlled nonetheless mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it wasn't fair because he needed to grieve, and a part of his grief may have included not seeing her talking a, a to true me. like cut, a true yeah. like right. And so that that was a big lesson. Like, give people the dignity of their process. Like, you can still do something with dignity and allow it to be difficult. 
Mm. Having dignity doesn't mean it's just going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you dating? Can I ask you that? Yeah. With I intention. Knew I knew she was dating. I knew it. Because she was like, yes, <laughs> yes, not the end of the road, baby. I felt that. Yeah. I felt that in my I spirit. talked about it on the podcast um, that I was going to date with intention. So earlier this year, I'm on a flight. Um, I had a brand gig in New York and I was flying to speak at San Antonio. And I'm on the flight and I literally have this like, again, that like s still small voice that's, that's like nudging. It's like, you're not even clear on what you want. Mm -hmm. Do you even really know what you want? And you know, you can list a few things like honest, kind, right? And so I take my phone out, open up the notes, and my spirit is like, write everything that you want and don't hold back. And I get down to like seven things and I'm like, I remember reading an article where they were like, women are too picky and they just need to have three things and let God fill in the rest. And then my spirit was like, they were not talking to you, ma'am. Your spirit said, write it all. The list was like 29 things, mm. 29 things. And every day, like not every day, but I would say a couple times a week, I just kind of review it because I started to have an awareness. This is the thing. I was heads down faithful, like all the thing for 14 and a half years, right? So I didn't even know when men were flirting with me because I used to just always be like, mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. thank you. They'd be like, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I never really looked around, paid attention, none of that. So having the list allowed me to start having more awareness around men, mm -hmm. right? And then I could meet people and all of a sudden, like I would notice like, oh, someone's flirting with me and I would talk to them and then I go, Oh, mm -mm. that ain't it. No, you know, not you. Like I remember one <laughs> thing on the list call was like, oh, um, I want someone that's humorous, right? And I met a guy. He seemed really cool. I'm talking to him, and then I realized he has mean spirited humor. Mm. So his humor is at the expense of other, other people. people. I don't really like that. As someone who was bullied, you know, as a kid and all that, when it was teasing, mm -hmm, but it was nasty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm like, I really don't like mean spirited humor. Um, so I had to like update the list. I was like, humor, let me get not specific. Yeah, let me right. get specific. So that was a really good exercise for me um, in this season. Just like, okay, what do what do you want? I will say this: I learned that there's not a shortage of men. <sighs> Tell them. Look in that camera right there and say that one more time. I have really learned that there's not a shortage of men and good men. And I all like I said before, I think it's your attitude and mm -hmm. what you expect. Mm -hmm. Because if your perception is all men are dogs and everyone's evil, then that's the lens that you're gonna like look at everyone. And that's what you're going to attract. And that's what you attract. But I've actually met a lot of great men. They were not necessarily great for me, but it was really a great exercise. I'm like, oh, nice people exist out here. Yes. Nice tall ones. Come on, nice tall ones. Do you notice know men be lying about their height? Yes. Why do they do that like you're not going to see them in real life and know they're not? And I'm too tall to play. I'm too tall to play that game. <laughs> Stop. Listen, guys. Stop lying about your height. But I do agree with what you said because even before I met my husband, and we are here in Atlanta where they say it ain't no good, straight, black <laughs> man, okay? I met several good men. They just weren't for me yeah so i don't and but i never ever ever subscribe to there's no good men the men are just cheating you know i've never subscribed mm -hmm. to that but i feel like women who put that out there that's what you're gonna get back yeah all the time all the time i mean your mind is always looking for ways to confirm its beliefs mm. it's always searching for a way to confirm so if you're looking for a certain type of thing and you're like all people do this thing that's, that's all you're, you're ever going to see mm 